Welcome to the Western Acre webinar about SAP EWM Labour Management. In this webinar we will cover the following topics. An introduction to labour management, an overview of the demonstration that will be conducted, capturing the labour management execution data and the reporting that's available. My name is Hitu Bindari and I am a consultant at Western Acre Consulting. I will now lead you through the webinar. This is an overview of the labour management module including the highlights and benefits. Labour is typically over 50% of the total cost of warehouse operations, yet it is rarely tracked. Labour management in EWM works by storing workload documents for key warehouse tasks so that you can monitor in real time the actual duration of the task compared to the standards defined. Labour management tracks direct and indirect labour execution times, giving you an accurate overview of all warehouse employee activities. These standards can be calculated in the background via predefined formulas that can include things like travel time or other variables. With this functionality, you can reduce asset and labour cost by managing your resources more efficiently. The labour management planning tool allows supervisors to better plan, simulate and view warehouse activities, helping them make operational decisions on how best to use resources and improve services to the end customer. Labour management standard reporting provided lets you view performance at different levels. KPIs can then be generated from this data and monitored. These reporting tools allow efficiencies to be made, reducing labour costs. Because labour management functions are integrated with human resources, we now have the ability to cost against employee performance. Workload data can be transferred and used to calculate bonuses in the HR system. Staff are incentivised based on performance, therefore increasing worker productivity. Now let's see the labour management module in action. This is our agenda for the webinar. Firstly, we will introduce the warehouse scenario that will be demonstrated. In EWM, we will then initiate our warehouse activities and view the impact on the labour management workload documents. The scenario that will be demonstrated is the inbound process with quality inspection and put away into warehouse. So when a truck arrives, it is directed to a specific door where it will be unloaded into a marshalling lane, a staging area. It will then be moved to a quality station where it will be quality inspected. Once it has been checked, a final move will be completed to its final destination in the warehouse. Now let's view how we initiate this process in the system. In EWM, we navigate to the inbound delivery transaction and find our goods that need to be booked in. Searching by purchase order number, that should be on the paperwork that physically comes with the goods, we should find our inbound delivery. This inbound delivery has been checked in through the gatehouse where the license plate has been recorded. We can see that the delivery has one item with one pallet, one handling unit number. We navigate to the unloading transaction to start the process of unloading the pallet. In the unloading transaction, we can initiate our warehouse activities, which automatically in the background trigger several process steps. After this point, our first warehouse activity for unloading has been created. Now let's review the impact of our first step in the monitor and check that our warehouse task has been created and its corresponding workload item for recording the labour. Let's find our warehouse task under the documents node. We can search for our warehouse task by the handling unit number from the delivery. An unloading warehouse task has been created 
to unload the pallet from the truck to the staging lane near door 1. If we now check labour management under planned workload node, a workload item is created automatically for unloading, but not for the second step to the quality station, as there is no corresponding warehouse task. Back to our agenda. We have initiated the process flow for goods receiving, creating a warehouse task that needs to be confirmed, and creating a workload item to record labour activity. In section 2, we will now see how actual labour durations are captured automatically in EWM. Recording labour management process steps. Actual labour times are captured automatically through the RF transactions and can be used on mobile devices. Each EWM process step for example, unloading, put away, picking, etc., can be set up to record labour execution times, so you can choose exactly which steps are relevant for labour management. Indirect labour tasks are ad hoc activities that are not related to standard EWM processes and can be created as required. For example, checking quality documentation sweeping the floor, housekeeping, etc. All other processes are not recorded in labour management. Each process step that is recorded in labour management has a planned duration defined. This is calculated automatically with predefined formulas. In our process flow, we now have a task for unloading from the vehicle. So we're going to look at specifically confirming this task to the marshalling area in the system. In EWM, we will navigate to the RF transactions to unload the pallet from the truck. We will go into our inbound process, unloading and unload by transport unit, which is our license plate number. Here we will need to confirm our pallet ID and confirm the staging lane that we are confirming the pallet into. In the background, automatically the system saves the duration of the workload task. Now let's review the impact of confirming our warehouse task in the monitor and check the status of our corresponding workload item for recording labour execution. Back in the warehouse monitor, under planned workload, if we refresh, we can see that our unload task has been completed, but a new quality task has been created. If we check our warehouse task, for our handling unit number, we can see by handling unit number the open tasks that our unload task has been completed and a new quality task has been created that needs to be confirmed. Back in our process flow, the truck is now left and we have confirmed the unloading task. In the background, this has updated labour management with execution details. But now we need to record an indirect labour task. There's quality paperwork that needs to be checked and this will take some time. So let's record an indirect labour task in the system. Again, from the RF menu, we can record an indirect labour task through internal processes. And if we page down, we get to a labour management an indirect labour task recording. We can create a new indirect labour task and we have to choose our step. We have a choice of two. We will choose QDoc for quality documentation. We can press the start button to indicate we have started our indirect labour task and then the end button to confirm that we have completed this task and save this updates the system with a record of our indirect workload. Now let's review the impact of creating an indirect labour task in the warehouse monitor. 
and check what workload item has been created. Back in the Warehouse Monitor, under Labour Management, we can see indirect labour tasks. The last document shows our labour task with a duration. Now back to our agenda, we have captured direct and indirect labour durations. In Section 3, let's review the reports that are available from this data. Before we view reporting, let's review our process flow. We have confirmed our warehouse task from the door to the marshalling area. This has created an executed workload for unloading. We have also registered our indirect labour task. This has created an executed workload for quality documentation. Also in the background, I have confirmed our warehouse task to the quality centre. This has created a workload for the quality step. And I've confirmed the final put away into the warehouse. And this has created another workload for our put away step. Let's view how this has been registered in EWM. We've confirmed our move to the quality station and to our final warehouse location, both in RF. Now let's review the impact of confirming all our warehouse tasks in the monitor and check the status of our corresponding workload items in labour management. In the warehouse man monitor in EWM, we can view the, all the tasks that have been created for our handling unit we can see that there's been an un unload task, a quality task and a put away task that have all been confirmed. If we navigate to labour management for planned workload, we can see that there is no open workload for our handling unit. However, in executed workload for today, we can see that there has been four workload tasks being executed. Each process step has been recorded, direct and indirect. Against each workload, there is an actual duration in minutes. There is details also on start and end times and the user that processed the workload. There is also the owner of the workload task. So that could be different clients. We also have time distance, which can be used to calculate the travel time from one area of the warehouse to another. We also have direct and indirect labour, actual and planned labour, and any differences between the two. This is in hours, and we have the same again in time format. We also have the efficiency of each workload task dependent on the actual versus planned workload time. We can navigate to the labour utilisation reports. We can view the executed workload in many different ways. We can view it by activity areas. We can view it by steps executed. We can view it by the owner of the workload. We can also view it by direct and indirect. And also by the user. We can narrow down our workload results by different parameters. In this case, I'm going to narrow it down for the two process steps that we executed for unloading and for our indirect task of quality documentation. We can also apply a layout that provides us with totals and subtotals, and we can see the details of one particular process step down to the warehouse order level. The accumulated totals allows us to display a graph. This shows that our unloading task is very different from planned to actual. 
This is just one of the graphical outputs from EWM. There are other ways to report on this data. In EWM, we have seen the workload documents being generated and the standard set of reports that are available that allows us to look at actual versus planned and also a view by entity, so the client. So we're able to determine the cost and the time it takes to serve a particular client. The measurement services can also be used in this area to calculate, for example, the average duration of a put-away task. Measurement services allows you to set up events and alerts and triggers off this information and also can be pulled into a graphical format like a cockpit to view everything at one glance. The workload data can also be extracted and used in business warehouse, allowing strategic planning and drill down capability of the information. From our agenda, we have covered the creation of workload items in labour management, the capturing of the execution times against these items, and also the reports available on this data. Now let's move on to our final section. The summary. So, to summarise, EWM Labour Management is designed to help you optimise the labour activities of your warehouse and maximise the resource utilisation to best meet your operational needs. Labour Management gives you the ability to plan labour activities with a formula builder to define labour standards to simulate labour activities for different scenarios, allowing you to get the right person to the right place at the right time, to view labour activities throughout the day and measure performance on individual tasks, and to measure the labour activities using standard KPIs and measurement tools to provide alerts when performance falls below expectations. And finally, an interface to human resources for incentivised based wages. Labour management records data that allows you to reduce costs and increase productivity. We have reached the end of this webinar. If you would like to get in touch with us, we are happy to serve you. You can email us on sem at westonacker.com. At this point, I'd like to say thank you very much for participating. I hope that I will see you again in one of our further webinar series we provide. All the best and see you soon.